Green Grease, the waterproof fertilizer resistant synthetic grease that lasts up to eight times longer than regular grease. Now available at participating Napa stores, AutoZone, Tractor Supply, and Advanced Auto Parts. On this episode of Tractor Fanatic, we're heading back out to Carl and Don Vilwalk's farm to check out more of their classic tractors. Okay, we covered this whole one and we got a whole other side to go. Do you want to start over here? Well, these. well, these are a little different, especially for Vilwalk Farms. We, we have a problem with green paint. Everything's usually red or gray around here because we tend to favor red tractors. Now, Don really prefers McCormick's. Now, he still did have those. He's got five or six. John Deere's, but you know, that's kind of like a, you know, Auburn, Alabama thing with the tractor people. You know, if you love one, you can't love the other and stuff like that. So these are the step kids. Yeah, they They're are. Farm. They're the special. <laughs> They're special, our special kids special that we special have. Kids. <laughs> our special needs. Matter of fact, I was getting my hair cut one time at the barber shop, and uh, the old dude in the in the chair said, my daughter's a John Deere girl, and she's getting ready to marry this guy that's a Moline guy. And the barber said those mixed marriages never work. They are actually uh, is more of an orchard tractor to uh, get down with the fenders that they have there to be able to get underneath the limbs a little bit and uh, just a little bit different tractor, but a very, actually a good tractor for its day. Now this one's different. Yeah, uh, John Deere made these little L's and LA's they call them. And they uh, were more of a fruit uh, and vegetable crop type tractor that uh, farmers that didn't have a lot of acreage had those. They're very compact and they'd quite often have a cultivator that they'd put underneath them and uh, just a little fun tractor to drive and Yeah, it's, get di out. it's different looking, isn't it? Now here is a Model B. It's the less than 500th serial number. I forget uh, what the serial number actually is on it, but a very, very old uh, tractor and uh, one of the first row crop tractors uh, of any size and mass production that John Deere really had. Now this one, look at that nice seat cover. Yeah, well, this is kind of like the LA and the John Deere. This is a row crop tractor. They call it a Cultivision. And the idea was that you could set off to the side here with this seat mm -hmm. and see right down the row. Yeah. And so if you're cultivating watermelons or tomatoes or other fruits and vegetable type crops, you'd be able to uh, see your crops a lot better. So that's where they come up with this name Cultivision. So now what about this cover right here? I think that's an add-on. Add add yeah, I think somebody's put that on just to make that metal Because it's seat. pretty cool looking. Yeah, it is. I never thought the purple would go with the red, but it kind of does. Now, this is an orchard uh, tractor, an 04. Now, it is missing quite a bit of the sheet metal off of the side that would cover the sides of the engine and actually cover the wheel so the apple tree limbs would raise up and over. Mm -hmm. And if you'll notice the seat sits way down low and so the operator could duck and let those limbs go up and over. So orchard tractors are kind of rare, uh, especially ones with good sheet metal on them. So we're still looking for some sheet metal for this one and we'll eventually hopefully restore it the way it's supposed to look. Green Grease, the waterproof fertilizer resistant synthetic grease that lasts up to eight times longer than regular grease. Use Green Grease on your car, truck, tractor, boat trailer, wheel bearings, anything with a grease fitting. Green Grease seals and protects even underwater. Now available at participating Napa stores, AutoZone, Tractor Supply, and Advanced Auto Parts. Now this is getting a little heavier, isn't it? Yeah, this is uh, really what put International McCormick Deering Farm all. Uh, that were made by International Harvester Corporation. This is an F30. This would have been one of their larger uh, tractors at that time. It's a 1937 model. Uh, this is what brought farmers uh, really post-World War I as they come back home from World War I and got to mechanizing their farms. An F20 and an F30 were really the two largest selling 
uh, tractors on the market uh, back then. Now this has the enclosed gears down here yeah. like they don't have over there, right? It does, uh, they call those external planetary gears. And uh, if you drive this tractor down the road, uh, which I've done a few times, it is very, very uh, noisy. And uh, so that transmission, the way they were and those external gears like that, uh, it's no wonder us solar farmers can't hear very well or uh, <laughs> like going to a rock concert uh, 12 hours a day. <laughs> so this is the F-20, the smaller brother of the F-30. We would talked earlier about how they made them easy to overhaul. Mm -hmm. We'll have these inspection doors here on the block. And so you could take those out, get your wrenches, wrenches in there and actually unhook uh, the pistons then and uh, put in uh, crankshaft bearings and things like that through these inspection uh, doors. And so that was part of that process to make it easier to overhaul during the winter months. But the thing that uh, made all these tractors of this era was the evil crank. And so farmers every uh, morning, they'd get out here and have to put their crank on and spin that around and hopefully it didn't backfire and break their arms. And so there's a way to do that. And if you are instructed not to put your thumb over the crank, because then if it did backfire, it'd break your arm. Everything's different now. It's not even the same. I mean, before they had these hand cranks where you start the tractor and if you don't do it right, it'll break your arm. That's old school. That's really old school. What do you have at your house that if you don't do it right, it'll break your arm? besides a surly teenager. So you're supposed to crank with your thumb not wrapped around it, and then if something happens, well then uh, if it yanks back like that, it would pull the crank out of your hand. That has got it. Now I know that that happened to my grandpa. I got his broken one time. That's got to yep. smart. Here's another F20 when they switched over from gray. This was actually a factory color. A lot of people don't understand that or remember that or were too young to remember that, that uh, McCormick Deering Farm Alls originally come out as gray, and then they decided that was dangerous. You couldn't see them on the road and were subject to uh, collisions, and so then they changed over and started painting them red. So wow. basically these two tractors are almost identical. This is a little bit older. Uh, but uh, the gray is an original color. Yeah, because that, uh, that would be hard to see at night. And you know, wow. Sure would I never be. even thought of that. Now look at, the, look at the gills on this puppy right here. What mm -hmm. year is this? That uh, is a McCormick Deering 1020. That's a 1928 model. So it was one of the later models of a 1020. They had these side shields on. I'm not exactly sure what all they were for other than to in the winter time to keep the heat in there and keep the oil warm and uh, to do that, but really maybe to keep the dust out as much in the field. So uh, the 1020 was one of the original workhorses and of uh, modern agriculture. What is the oldest tractor here that you guys actually farmed with? The oldest would have been the F20 uh, would have been uh, that actually come from the farm or been uh, one like we had on the farm. Uh, I guess we did have the Moleens that we talked about earlier that my grandfather had. And so he went from a Moline to the Fordson, the Henry Ford Fordson, then to the 1020 McCormick Deering, and then went from the McCormick Deering to an F20 and an F30. And so uh, these are the tractors and why we collect them. I think a lot of collectors kind of like that thought process. I'd like to collect all the tractors we've ever had. And yeah. that's going to be a long list in my head for starting from my grandfather to my dad to uh, me uh, today. But uh, I think a lot of collectors have that fantasy that they just like to have every tractor. Oh, I wish I had every car, all the Mustangs and Camaros and that Dodge oh. Charger I oh. had if I would have just kept them. On our next episode of Tractor Fanatic, we'll check out Don and Carl Vilwalk's collection of antique farming equipment.